Good morning, friends, brothers and sisters, Facebook fam, and all those out there. It's so good to spend some more time with you. I look forward to this. It's 40 sermons in 40 days, and right now we are officially at halftime. Today is day 21, and this series has been very helpful for me. I hope it's helped somebody out there. We got a cool real uh, base of of kind of followers, an uh, online group that's starting to develop. I appreciate you guys that are commenting, means a lot, uh, sharing it, reposting it, and I hope you'll jump over to my YouTube channel. There's a link right down at the bottom as I'm trying to really build that so people have a, a whole stockpile of, of messages to help them. And if you have a small group or you're looking for a you know a quiet time series or if you your church needs a good midweek series, then that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. But um, I'm just looking for something and I lost it. But anyway, there's also a, a 40 Days of Prayer project that we're starting to do uh, with some churches, with a corporate team, and some people are just doing it individually uh, in a, a small group. But it's built for 40 days in a row of momentum where you pray specific prayers, ones that scare you a little bit that you're willing to stretch and get in some areas that scare you, man. And you really learn to look for God in the details of the day because he is surely working for us. And now's a great time spiritually. Um, I'm amazed at how nature thrives during this, you know, very, very tough time on our planet. Nature is thriving. Life always finds a way. This universe, it bends toward light and love and life and it will do its work to cleanse itself and also to continue helping us to figure out how to live on this planet how to live together how to continue to grow and be safe and be healthy and god has designed all of this in a way where it just flat works and when our life doesn't work the way we do government the way we do family the way we treat other nations or colors or political rivals or, you know, just races. Life has a way of getting our attention. And one thing that I keep saying on this series is this is a valuable opportunity for us. We might see it as a curse, but I believe that it can become a blessing to many people. And pray for those people that have loved ones that are ill or God, tragically, I've had people pass. I mean, pray for them. I can't imagine being quarantined and then having a loss and not being able to have a memorial or a funeral service or, gosh, it's got to be so hard. So we've got to think about the other during this time. But I believe this is a rebuilding time because what we've seen in the last month, it's been a month today since our governor here in Georgia put out the call, hey, go to the grocery store, <laughs> and everybody freaked out. And they went, and we went, and everybody stockpiled, right? And people were hoarding, and that was exactly a month ago. And I want you to think about how amazing the human capacity to suffer and to adapt, adjust, and become. In a month, we've laid down new habits. I mean, it's amazing. We walk the dogs every day. There's a park not far from here. My wife and I will take our dogs. And when people are walking down the sidewalk, you know, we just, we lovingly pass in a big wide arc and it's like, how you doing? And it just, it's just become quickly a habit. Do you, do you start noticing things that you touch? And then man, we're washing hands, we're disinfecting groceries, doing all this crazy stuff, can't see our families. But within a month, I've started to reprogram some things to where I'm, I'm thinking of everything. Imagine if we did that spiritually. If we really thought before we touch a thing, do a thing, let thoughts roll, you know, let habits develop. Because over this quarantine, you better understand this, you do anything for 40 days and you establish new habits in the brain. So if those that are going into the things that enslave them during this 40 days, man, you are building and reinforcing habits that you're gonna take into whatever the new normal is that we go out into. So, man, this is spiritual boot camp. This is where we are laying down tracks that we are going to live with. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to go back out into the world with my unhealthy habits reinforced and strengthened. And oh yeah, I picked up a couple other bad ones along the way because I was 
you know, unhappy, depressed, anxious. God bless anybody that's going through that. If our, you know, marriage is being revealed, if our kids are starting to act out, you know what I'm saying? If the job pressure is starting to get you worn down, if you're not sleeping well, heaven forbid, if you're quarantined by yourself, please understand this is a valuable time. It doesn't have to be a curse. It can be a time where you come alive and you rebuild. And God does his thing. Life has its way. And we get what we need. So, what habits are we trying to develop? Which ones are we trying to quarantine and delete? See, we can quarantine a bad habit, a nature that's got us. And we can delete it, but we've got to replace it. You know, one time Jesus said, when a demon is driven out, Man, if you don't fill that house, he'll go get seven buddies and move right back in. And that's, I think, the, the nature of a physical habit that we're trying to overcome. There's going to be some people that come out of this beast built. Man, they've been doing 90px or whatever the heck it's called. You know, doing, you know, really just using this time to feed their bodies right. You know, we're not out there eating fast food. Man, we're cooking. It can be a time to resurrect your body physically. It can be a time where you start counting every penny and really get your finances straight if that's a struggle. It's a good time for that. Man, if you struggle with an addiction, I'm praying for you not to reinforce it, but to break it. You can dismantle it during this time. There are online AA groups. I mean, just like everybody's doing Zoom, so are people in recovery doing that. And so there's things that, that you can rebuild. This is a time to rebuild your marriage if it had gotten stale or dull. This is a time to reconnect with a daughter or a son and have those good talks and go on walks, do the things we can do. Man, this is a valuable time. Please don't waste it. And I see you, Laura. I pray for you every day, my sweet sister. And so anyway, today we're going to take that that basically teaching on rebuilding and we're going to go on it and got roots got to have roots my partner roots he's going to do the last part of the lesson today you're going to like this part so jesus in the um famous sermon he's teaching and this is comes out of luke 6 um in chapter or excuse me verse 46 it says this is a great question <laughs> why do you call me lord lord and do not do what i say I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and put them into practice. He's like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but it could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. You know, Jesus talks about building. He always, he talked about things that we could relate to. And what we're trying to do in this series is not just teach some scriptures or, you know, continue to, you know, here's what we need to do. That's, that's awesome, but I'm trying to do it in a way where it's very practical for what we're going through. I know I need that. And so he talks about building. When we come out of this, which now there's talk about how soon do we get to come back? You know, and everybody go back and, you know, practice the new guidelines. That's a very important decision. But whenever that is, we will go through as a nation and as a world, a phase of rebuilding what has been torn down. Here he talks about a storm and he talks about two homes. Okay, out there, we're all quarantined in our homes and we've got different states of building. We've built our homes and for years we've been practicing. And we've been building, and we've been studying, and we've been working. But now our structure, our homes, our foundation is being tested by a storm, a torrent, which is shaking our house. It might not, well, last night there were tornadoes that came through Georgia. Georgia lost, I think, six people yesterday to tornadoes. So, man, this one, is, we're getting a lot of opportunities, you know, to get exposed on this one. But heaven forbid that we get, you know, exposed on our homes, and I'm talking about our spiritual homes, and the foundations are faulty. We're going to have to rebuild. But the cool thing is we don't have to. Wait, we can, we can rebuild now, and I'm, I'm asking you to. You're creating new habits. Whatever the brain does a lot, it does very well. 
and it does not judge. It just gives or takes what we give it and processes it, builds habits and patterns around it, reinforces it till it becomes a physical habit and now it's deep in the subconscious where you are driven by your subconscious beliefs and habits. Plans, you know, are up here. Habits are down here. Guess which are more powerful? Habits are a thousand times more powerful than your plans. That's why we create these great New Year's resolutions or Easter is a great time to resurrect. And today's first day after Easter is time to go march out into the world. Well, that's awesome. And I think that we're very serious about those things. But guess what? The habits, they're ingrained and they're not trying to go anywhere because this is how you've taught yourself how to do life. But how do we do life after the storm? Man, the quality of our work is tested. So Jesus says, be careful how you build. Okay, give care and thought into how you build. This is a time for routines, new ones, not the same old, same old. If we take the same routines into this quarantine thing, it's going to be a mess. And I know this, domestic violence, domestic disturbances, the calls are, are spiking. And it's not a shock. Why? I mean, we're being revealed. And so people are squabbling and fighting and there's things going on. And so this fire, it refines and it tests. And he says, be careful. You've got two ways you can do it. You can do it your way. And that's just the ideas you have and the good thinking. But here's what I figured out. When I was in my biggest mess, my best moves got me in that pit. I'm talking about my best moves. I mean, if you're out there, we've all done our best moves it's not like anybody wakes up in the morning and says today i'm gonna make some bad decisions and poor choices <laughs> you know we go out and we do the best we can where we're at with what we have and then we see how it works out for you you know how's how's your plan how's my plan have i been putting work in that's now being shown that this is a solid foundation man is it a happy home is it a peaceful home you know, is, it, is there progress being made? We're halfway through this 40 sermons in 40 days, and now it's a halftime talk. How has the first month of the pandemic gone for you? And I'm not talking about all the stats that we can recite and all the bad news that we can imagine. And then we start sharing, and then it's this, uh, everybody's sharing bad news. You know, the anti-gospel. <laughs> Go and share bad news to the whole world and make warriors out of the whole the nations <laughs> it's like you didn't say that this is good news right and so you've got an opportunity to break free i want you to pick one thing one thing that if you overcame that with his help game changer 10 years 20 years at the end of your life you're going to look back and say it was 2020 <laughs> 2020 has been a trip I don't know about you, but I was like 20, 20. I've been looking at that number for a long time, right? And now it's come, and it's not at all what we expected. It is a time of rebirth. But first, you've got to tear something down until you can rebuild it. Good news is we've got the architecture plans. <laughs> Jesus says, you want to rebuild it? Because here's the deal. We are preparing for the next storm right now. The world is going to be better equipped the next time one of these viruses starts to spread. Because we're going to have the hospitals in better shape. We're going to have the supplies and the ventilators and the masks and hopefully toilet paper. <laughs> you know, we're going to have all the things. We're going to have communication set up. We're going to have already, a, you know, this task force that's figuring things out. We're going to be further ahead because of the, um, the science and the research and the doctors that are trying to find a cure and the antibodies and the vaccine. You understand that we're going to be better prepared for the next storm. But are we, you and me, this is, this is what's going to prepare us. So the next storm that comes, and it might come in the, the, you might lose someone, you might get a diagnosis, you might, you know, be on the verge of something. And now all of a sudden, whew, the storms of life come, not because of anything you've done or not because, man, you're, you're being punished. It's just life, man. Life has a way of recreating itself and breaking us down so that we can shine again right and so this is a very important time so how do you build if you pick that one thing and you say i'm going to war on my health i'm gonna man i'm gonna just get beast right you can do that every single day and you could walk out into the world and everybody go whoa bro you look great man i was facetiming with my daughter and our daughter's 21 
and she uh, teaches kids that, that have some special needs and at a special school, so proud of her. Her name's Lena, and she is thriving. <laughs> it's like in the quarantine. She's an artist, she's a free spirit, she's a free thinker, man. She's a, she goes deep, she writes poetry, she does yoga, she's you know, all about nature. I mean, it's crazy. And so we were FaceTiming and I said, baby, you look great. And she said, I thrive in chaos and isolation. <laughs> and I'm like, and she meant it. She's smiling. She's in there creating something. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know. Maybe everybody's not like that. I know that I have to have an actual plan, but she does too. And she's 21. So what if you went back out into the world just in a whole different shape and people were like, wow, what did you do? I didn't waste my storm, man. I started to rebuild my body. I, I talk about addiction a lot. You know it's very close to my heart. And now is a perfect time to deal with your addiction. You can study. You can reach out to someone that's a safe, trusted friend. And you can share, man, I am struggling. I'm, I'm taking more prescription medicine than is prescribed. And I, I fear that I've got to have it. Man, maybe you're looking at screens and it's just, it's causing shame in your life and you just feel down and you feel beat up. There's a trusted friend that you could bring into this battle with you. And this could be your time where you overcome that thing. Could be your anger. You know, it could be some sort of, I mean, people get online and do all kinds of things to soothe pain. And heaven forbid we come out of this storm and all we've done is built a new addiction. You know what I'm saying? So maybe pick one relationship that you've got, man, I'm going to go to work on this thing and I'm going to, I'm going to save it and I'm going to rebuild it. That is a beautiful thing. And then when we get on the other side of this, we'll never ever say this thing was a blessing to the world, but we can say, Hey, it was a blessing to me and I broke my curse. But here's the deal. If you're going to overcome a habit, you've got to get some help. Get some people in your battle. Accountability is good if you want it. And then you've got to isolate that thing. Then you've got to quarantine it. I mean, you've got to quarantine that thing that is your Goliath, your mountain you've got to take, your castle, your dragon you have to slay. And that thing is now isolated. It's quarantined. It cannot infect anymore. And now it's time to delete. Just like you delete a virus. You've got to delete that thing. But if you don't replace it, you're going to miss it. And that's like an alcoholic giving up the booze and then not replacing it with anything. Well, now you're just a sad, stressed out, pissed off, drunk. Excuse me, <laughs> that's not drinking. I mean, you've got to replace it with something better. Whatever you're trying to break, replace it with something better. And then start putting days behind you. Man, this many times in a row. Maybe it's power times in the morning. Maybe you're starting a FaceTime Live. You start Facebook. That you start encouraging people with your stuff. And some of you do. I see you. You know, God bless you, man. We need lights in this world. But if you isolate, quarantine, delete, and replace, replace is the most important thing. I wouldn't drink. <laughs> man, no way. I hadn't been tempted in years, in over a decade. It's been 15 years since I decided to slay that dragon. And I had to get help. I had to get routines. I had to replace playmates and playgrounds and playthings and change everything, man. But now my life is so much better. I would not trade it. For a double crown on the rocks with a splash of water, sitting in a place where people are just trying to drown their pain. Why would I make a trade like that? But you know what? In that area of my life, I put in the work. You know, you've got to put in the work. And now we get some time and space to do that. So pick your one thing. Isolate that thing. Bring somebody into that quarantine. And then delete and replace. Delete and replace. And man, do this. 40 days in a row, do you realize what you can do and who you could be? I told you my buddy Roots is going to close out the message today. <laughs> I'm going to speak on his behalf. <laughs> For those that are just meeting him, he's been around the world with me. He was a, a branch in the tree, swaying in the breeze. But then, just like last night, man, the tornadoes came through. And they knocked this branch to the ground. The reason I know that is because he would never have been found if he didn't get on the ground. And so whether it was a storm or a lightning strike or a heavy wind or an axe, something brought this beautiful branch out of his source, his life. He was disconnected to the, the tree, which was his connection to the source. 
And so he was knocked down and now he's a nasty branch and he's destined to be thrown away. Why? That's what we do with trash. I got branches from the storm last night. I got to go out and get them and I'm not going to go around and say, a treasure, another piece of artwork. I put them in a pile out there and then they're just destined to be thrown away or burned. And yeah, that makes roots sad, but it's like, hey man, you're good. And so anyway, the, you know, it's, it's getting knocked down is when we find ourselves. Dreams are born out of desperation, man. When you got nothing else, when everything's good, <laughs> you're not dreaming a lot. You know, you're not, you're not grieving a lot. You're just like doing life. And then all of a sudden, relationship becomes religion. Religion never satisfies. Now it's time we're bound and we're going to church and feeling bad. But maybe it stirs us up because it's a great sermon and great music. And then we go back to our home and it's the same old, same old. And now we're very discouraged getting knocked down allows you to be seen. See, a beautiful little homeless man named Roots became my friend. And he found the branch and he made this and he gave it to me because he felt like I needed protection <laughs> on the streets I was working. And so <clears throat> he gave me this. I began to work on it. He had chopped off some things. You're gonna have to chop off a few things. Man, he had whittled away on it, banged away at it. Man, this thing is gonna chop you up. It's gonna refine you. And then he shellacked it and weatherproofed it. And then I began to adorn it. And now this thing went on a world tour. <laughs> a branch destined to die, kicked aside, trampled on, going to be burned, goes on a world tour and becomes an inspiration for lots of people. And now people know his name. And every time I get in front of an audience and say, what's his name? And they yell roots, whether it's convicts or kids or corporate. It's so much fun. Football teams want him on the sideline. He's, he's magic to them, man. He's a symbol of potential. So as I close, there's a you inside that you have not met yet. And you've been knocked to the ground. All of us have. The storm has knocked us flat on our back. Now's the time to find your dream and to recreate yourself. He was redesigned. Well, what if we redesign our faith and our relationship with God through this storm? That's what I want. And that's all I want for you. God bless you in your journey. Do not curse the storm. Find the blessing in it. Find the self and go on your world tour. Roots, he's changed my life. And you guys are changing my life too. If this is helping you, please share it. And please click the link and subscribe to my YouTube. All these are there, 40 and 40. And then we're going to go on. I can't stop. Because if you do anything for 40 days, it's a habit. So I guarantee you on day 41, I'll probably be right here because it's a habit already after 21. I love you. Keep doing you. Be the peace you wish to see. Be the husband, the wife you always dreamed you could be. Kids, find your depth now. You'll thank me in 20 years. I got to go. See y'all later. Peace out. You guys are awesome.